Good evening and welcome to Columbus Grove High School for tonight's matchup between the Crestview Lady Knights and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside, alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, we got an excellent early season matchup tonight against two NWC teams that are looking to get off on the right foot on conference play. Well, that's exactly right. They're both. And the Delphus Jefferson, they're really good and not going to lose many games. So to go a one and two at this point in the season would be very difficult to come back from and win a league championship still possible of course but the winner of this game kind of stays in the race and losers on the fringe and crest unites coming in tonight on a three game winning streak got off to a little bit of a rough start but have kind of righted the ship the offense has found its groove the defense has only been giving up an average of 30 points a game over those three games so it should be a fun night tonight columbus grove we know what they're going to bring always play tough a little bit of a rough start this year three and four record but, you know, a much better team than that record might suggest. Their numbers are so similar on the season. Crestview scores it at 47. They give up 38. Columbus Grove scores it at 44. They give up 37. The numbers are very similar this year. So we are just about underway as the opening tip is about to go up. And the Columbus Grove Bulldogs will control that. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Lady Bulldogs. They're going to start number two, Lauren Ockmoody, number three, Jalen Sauter, number five, Brent Fortman, number 12, Sage Clement, and number 23, Nicole Nesby. First shot for the Bulldogs is up and good. Got Nesby on a back screen, free her up inside for the easy one. So the Knights quickly come down and answer with a basket of their own. Baseline move that time by Joseph Kowicki. As Kowicki quickly came down and answered. And we have a turnover as this ends up in the hands of Lacey McCoy. Taking a look at the starters for the Lady Knights. Number three, Macy Kowicki. Number four, Ellie Klein. Number five, Callie Gregory. Number 10, Lacey McCoy. And number 21, Josie Kowicki. She has seven lettermen returning. Columbus Grove lost a bunch of players from a year ago. Four lettermen back. Three-point shot by Ockmoody is up. That one's no good, but nice effort that time by Fortman to come up with the offensive rebound. An offensive rebound in as many possessions. Nice spin move towards the baseline, up and in for Sage Clement. Nice finish for two. At that time, the offensive rebound will hurt as she has an and one opportunity. Sage Clement's going to go to the free throw line to see if she can't convert the and one as Columbus Grove is on top here early in the or in the first quarter. Excuse me. Four to two. Clemens free throw is up. This one bounces around, comes down to the Lady Knights. And we have another turnover, though. The pressure from the Bulldogs here in the early going, causing some turnovers, giving them extra opportunity. And we're going to have an offensive foul. This one's going to go on Nicole Nesby. She went into the lane. Looks like she got a little hung up that time. Wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do with the basketball. And that shoulder got into the defender. Yeah, the indecision was exactly right. And she, she might have traveled had she not been called for the offensive foul. So either way, it's going to be a violation. It's full court pressure coming from the Bulldogs. Crestview able to get it over half court. And then that swarming defense comes, almost came up with another turnover there. Crestview able to save it. Ends up going baseline. This one's going to be last touched as it looks like Sauter was down there and knocked that one away. Inbounds pass comes in from behind the three-point line. This is Gregory, moves it over into the corner. A little bit of an opening that time as Klein tries to get one to go in. That one's no good, comes down to the Bulldogs. Columbus Grove's going to push the pace. Preston's been able to get straight line drives the last three possessions, but only scored on one of them. Jalen Sauter tries to get in and get that shot up. No good, but did pick up the foul. She's going to go to the free throw line. As that was Macy Kulwicki gets called with the foul. It's going to be her first, and it is the team's second. Jay Lou's dad, the boys coach here at Columbus Grove, sitting in the front row. Got the crush for you tomorrow night as well. So 
Sauter's first free throw was good. Second one is up, and that one is no good. Rebound, though, chased down by the Bulldogs. They have done a great job giving themselves second opportunities. Nice drive. This one off the glass and in for Bryn Fortman. And we are going to have a timeout by the Lady Knights. Columbus Grove on top early 7-2. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. So quick timeout by the Lady Knights as they have seen Columbus Grove get several turnovers, offensive rebounds, and have turned that into a five-point lead as Columbus Grove is on top, 7-2. to two. Pressure giving them a little bit of problems here, but able to pass out of it. Here's Klein, gets it up at the top of the key. Don't wait for the offense to get set. Bulldogs have done a good job with their 1-2-2 press and then drop to man-to-man. -man. Right now, Crestview just not finding a lot of space. Finally, a little bit going on down low, but a little late on that pass. Columbus Grove does a great job of making it up, and they close that. So Crestview's going to have to reset. Down low entry pass this time. Nice effort on the... Excuse me, on the inside that time. As you see, Callie Gregory come up with her first two points of the night. Columbus Grove wastes no time getting that ball back up onto their side of the floor, though. See, Clement drives baseline, kicks rid of it. Ends up in the hands of Bryn Fortman. Her shot's no good. As, you, as Lacey McCoy came up with the rebound. That time, you saw... Callie Gregory tried to get the pass down into the corner, but her teammate not expecting it, so lead to another turnover. And Nesby right there to get the pass, and she comes up with another two points. Two really good passes that time. You know, in hockey, you could get two assists, but not in basketball. That, that would have been in one of the situations you might have given a second assist on that pass. Another and turnover. another turnover. Hawk Moody jumped in, took that one away, passes it up to Bryn Fortman. And she had to pick that one up. Was in a little bit of trouble on the baseline. Got that one knocked out off of number four, Ellie Klein. There's some substitutions coming into the game. See number 22, Abby Steckscholdy check in for the Bulldogs. Inbound pass goes up high. Ock Moody comes up to take it. Nine to four lead, Columbus Grove on top. Sage Clement with a nice turnaround, but that one doesn't go. Loose ball ends up in the hands of Gregory. Crestview pushes it up quickly. Three point shot on its way, and this one is good. As Nevaeh Ross had checked into the game for Crestview, she comes in and hits a big three-pointer for the Knights. One of those seven Lettermans that are returning. Nice drive. Akmudi went to into attack mode that time. Couldn't get it to go down, but Nicole Nesby was right there to clean it up and put it back for two. Fourth offensive rebound in this opening quarter for the Bulldogs. Long passes. Gregory was in a little bit of trouble, and that's going to lead to the fifth turnover for the Knights. Cole Nesby going to take a break after a really good opening quarter. 5'11 freshman. Kennedy Pulte checking into the game for Nesby. 2.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. Columbus Grove on top, 11-7. Ock Moody with the head fake, going to drive. Off the glass, no good. Gregory comes up the rebound. She gets it up to... Excuse me, that was McCoy, McCoy with the rebound. Gregory took the pass, moved it up into the floor. And this is when Crestview's gotten themselves into trouble. When they've been able to move quick and get things going in transition, they found themselves with some success. But when they've had to slow down in this half-court set, that Grove defense has just been a little bit too much. We've seen quite a few turnovers. Trying to get the ball on the inside. The help has been there all night long. 
Fourth shot up. That one's going to be a little bit long. Rebound comes down to Columbus Grove. They got the ball down inside, but she had to hurry the shot because the defensive pressure came to her. Hawk Moody looking down low. Tries a nice slip pass on the inside, but that one gets taken away. McCoy pushes the tempo. And the Crestview Knights are able to convert on that transition to make it a two-point game. That it was. Two on one. Take the ball as far as you can when you get pressure from the defense. Go cross court and get a layup. Josie Kulwicki with those two points. She now has four on the night. Played it better that time. They ran the back screen that they scored the first basket on the game by Nesby. And Crestview played it better that time. Here's Sauter. She gets rid of it. Down into the corner. Brynn Fortman. She gets cut off, though. Crestview doing a nice job defensively now. Three-point shot on its way. Steck shoulder. That one's going to be off. Ellie Klein trying to push it up. Has to get rid of it. Three-point shot on its way. That one rattles in and out and then back in. And a big three-pointer by Callie Gregory. And that means Crestview is now on top one. Shows you the value of the three-point field goal. Crestview's got two of them this quarter. Ock Moody comes down, tries to get this one to go, and takes a home bounce that time. Rattles around and goes down. Columbus Grove back on top. 15 seconds left to go here in the quarter. That one's no good, but a nice follow that time by Gregory. She's able to take that one in and put that in. She had seven in the quarter, and that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. So started off a little slow, but both offenses got going. And after one, Crestview's on top of Columbus Grove, 14-13. We'll step aside and be back with the second quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, first quarter, you know, that first first half of that first quarter really was going to all Columbus Grove. We saw their defense, you know, getting turnovers, um, causing all sorts of issues for Crestview. But after that timeout, they came in, found some rhythm. When they got things going in transition, that offense really shined. Hit a couple of three-point baskets. Both teams shot the ball well in the opening quarter. Crestview 4 of 7 from 2. Columbus Grove 6 of 12. Crestview made both of their three-point field goals. Columbus Grove missed both of theirs. Columbus Grove made the only free throw of the game. They were 1 of 2. Seven rebounds, Crestview, six for Columbus Grove, but four of those are the offensive end. Five turnovers for the Knights, and two for Columbus Grove. A rare offensive rebound for the Knights as the offensive rebounds have belonged to Columbus Grove. Gives themselves a second opportunity, almost comes up with, and they do get another rebound. So the Crestview Knights kind of turn in the script here early in the second quarter. Fourteen, thirteen. the Lady Knights on top. Gregory with the long three-pointer. That one's no good. Just off. Rebound comes down to Columbus Grove. And Gregory takes it right away underneath her own basket. Forces that one up. Looked like she was trying to get some contact. Here come the Bulldogs. Sage Clement decides to pull it back out. Steck Schulte's three-pointer. That one's no good. Good box out by the Knights. They come up with the rebound. That is absolutely true. Really nice job inside by Ellie Klein. Kept Nesby off the glass and then buried a three. Ellie Klein comes down, hits another big three-pointer. And that is the third three-pointer for the Knights tonight. And right back at you, the first one from Columbus Grove. Kende Palti, she does a nice job. Excuse me, coming down and answering that three-point shot. And the Bulldog come up with another turnover. Oh. Fourth turnover on that play by Columbus Grove as the ball skipped out of bounds. And we'll have a little discussion about it. Let's see what the decision is. 
So we're kind of uh, in an inopportune place. They're going to say tipped. It's actually going to stay yep. with the Bulldogs. It's down in that corner. We had to kind of look around, so didn't quite see what had happened. But after the officials got together and discussed it, basketball is going to stay with Columbus Grove. That's, uh, I appreciate that. Let's get together and get it right. Officials did a really nice job with that time. Steve Orr and Mitch Owen tonight. And that shot missed. Also, Chris Ewald. So Gregory brings it up for the Lady Knights. Under six minutes left to go here in the half. As Crestview has done a nice job offensively adjusting to this pressure of Columbus Grove. McCoy looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Ends up in the hands of Klein. Klein tries to go on the inside. Here's Gregory. Turn around off the glass and in for two. Callie Gregory now has nine points on the night. She has been a huge offensive spark for Crestview. Scored in the low post by going back to the baseline side. Nesby kicks it back out. Three-point shot on its way. Clement's shot does not go down, but ends up in the hands of Akmudi. Akmudi puts it up. She gets it to go for two. Offensive rebound basket on the missed three. Still a one-point game. Crestview on top. As they quickly bring it up. Not trying to let Columbus Grove get set up defensively. Fifth offensive rebound here in the first 11 minutes of this game. Good pass. Nice slip pass along the baseline. Can't connect on, on the shot. Rebound comes down to Columbus Grove. Akmudi brings it up. Moves it over to Sauter as Columbus Grove right now just moves it around the perimeter. Nesby working on the inside, trying to see if she can't get a little bit of space as Columbus Grove right now showing a lot of patience. Nesby finally gets it right around the free throw line. Dribbles through a couple defenders, loses it, but ends up into the, uh, into the hands of Clement. That one's no good. Nesby tries to go for the putback. That one's no good. Scramble for the loose ball. Hawk Moody for three. Can't get that one to go. And finally, Crestview able to wrangle the basketball. They're going to go quickly. Moves it all the way up. And... Looked like got a little bit uh, intimidated to Klein. Thought there was going to be some contact, and that was no good. But either way, it doesn't matter as it ended up back into the hands of Callie Gregory, and she comes up with another three-pointer. So we are going to have another timeout, a 30-second timeout by the Knights. We'll step aside quickly and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, I think so far the story, we talked about it during the break there, Callie Gregory having one heck of a first half. Yeah, she's got uh, what, 12 on the board already. Buried a three-point field goal that time. They're going to come out and play some zone on this possession. Last possession, played, uh, played zone as well. Yep. Caused some issues as... Grove showed really good patience, and finally that when they found Nesby, they had opportunities. They just can continue to not be able to get offensive rebounds. At that time, it doesn't matter as Klein comes through, takes that one away, and Crestview has a turnover. Yeah, Ellie Klein doing just exactly what she's supposed to, drop from her wing position into the low post area, but then turns the basketball over, number seven. Trying to find Macy Kowicki that time, a little bit off on the pass, so it's going to go right back to Columbus Grove. And we talked about the pressure defense of Columbus Grove and what and the problems that it has been causing um, Crestview. But Crestview in, in this uh, zone defense has really slowed down Columbus Grove. They haven't had a lot of openings, and they're kind of having a little bit of problem solving that. That would be absolutely correct. The, the issue that they have to deal with is Nesby in the middle because she's not assigned a player like there would be in a man-to-man -man or in uh, you know, a 2-3 two, two, type zone. She might be able to free herself up in the lane. Three-point shot by Steck. Schulte is off. Rebound comes down to Gregory. Gregory quickly moves it up. She gets the pass right back. Almost went out of bounds. Saved it, but ends up into the hands of Clement. Clement goes the length of the floor. Decides to pull it back. Was probably the right decision. Here's Ock Moody. Tries to go through some defenders. Up, and that one's off. Gets her own rebound, though. Fortman, though. I'm Excuse me, Sauter. 
Sauter comes up with the three-point shot, and we are back to a one-point game. How often do you see that the rebound comes off the initial shot, the defense is all collapsed inside to try to rebound, so you kick out and you get that three-point shooter to on the line, bury that one, make it a one-point game. Three-pointer on its way. That one is good. Macy Kulwicki comes up with a three-point shot. Good ball reversal to the top of the circle and buried it. They're five of seven from the arc of the Crestview Knights. Right now, both teams just trading offensive blows. Defense is just trying to get a stop. There Stech we go. Steck Schulte in the corner is trying to get Nesby down low. Great job by Gregory coming over to the top, not picking up the foul. Time a little bit out of control underneath. As Akmudi playing great defense, comes up with it. Passes off to Sauter. Sauter moves to the right, off the glass. That one's off. Rebound comes down to Crestview. Really good take to the rim that time. Just shot it a little hard, expecting more defensive pressure than there was. Klein, a little bit of trouble up top. Almost thought that maybe she forgot she still had her dribble, but now she's going to take it, moves it around. Long pass over to Kulwicki. Kulwicki drives to about the free throw line, finds Gregory down low. Gregory off the glass for two. Really nice pass over top of the defender. Akmudi's guarding her at 5'6". Gregory at 5'10", was able to go up and get the ball and score. So Crestview pushes their lead out to 6, 27-21. Under a minute left to go here in the half. Akmudi for three. That one's no good. Fight for the rebound. They both end up on the floor. And I did... I believe we did have a jump ball call on that one, so possession arrow favors the Bulldogs. Been impressed by the freshman, Nicole Nesby, 5'11", and a good opening half. Clement drops it off, gets rid of it. Ock Moody for three, that one's no good, and she's still struggling to find her range. Gregory slows things down, gets it out of some traffic. Now McCoy is going to bring it back up in the logo of midcourt, let the offense set up. See if they try to play last shot. Fifteen seconds left to go. Ends up in the hands of McCoy. McCoy all the way across. And it looked like Kilwicky was trying to find Gregory, but it ended up into the hands of the Bulldogs. Ock Moody, and that one is no good as that's going to bring the first half to a close. So after two quarters of play, Crestview's on top, 27-21. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove High School. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine and we are just about underway here in the second half. Mark, fast-paced action yeah. there in the first half. The offenses really got going, and they tra traded blows there for a little while, especially in the second quarter. I know you have some stats there for us. Yeah, let's look at game stats, and, and it's really some, some unique type of things that have occurred in this game. First of all, Crestview 6 of 14 from inside the arc, but they are 5 of 7 from the three-point line, and they have not shot a free throw yet. Crestview has 16 rebounds, four of them at the offensive end. The negative for them is they have turned the ball over nine times. Columbus Grove, 7 of 18 from the two-point range, just 2 of 10 from the arc, 1 of 2 from the free throw line. What's kept them in the basketball game, two things. They have 14 rebounds, 9 at the offensive end, and they've only turned the basketball over five times in the opening half. The story of that first half had to be Callie Gregory. as She ended up with 14 in the half, really did a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, hit two big three-point shots. We saw her doing doing things defensively as well, getting some rebounds coming down. She, I mean, she really carried, especially when Crestview got off of that slow start. She did a lot and got that team back up there, and that's why they're sitting here with the six-point lead. Well, you would expect her to. As a sophomore, she was first-team all-conference, now back for her junior year, and you would expect her to have a big year. Her teammates do a good job of finding her, and she's done a good job of putting the ball in the basket. So we are underway. Crestview begins the third quarter with the basketball. We'll see what kind of adjustments we've come yep. up with. And we start off with a turnover by Crestview, and that's really um, one of the big things there that really kept – Columbus Grove around, you yeah. know, you, you mentioned the offensive rebounds, the second, third opportunities, but also turnovers. They had a lot of empty possessions. That, that right there was their 10th turnover. That was really good defensive pressure. Had no one to find to throw the basketball to and got called for a five count. So here's Ock Moody. 
This 1-2-2 two, two worked uh, well in the second quarter for Crestview. See if Grove found something to do with it here at halftime. See Nesby working through that paint, trying to find some openings eventually and get a three-point shot. That one missed everything, but another offensive rebound. Ockmoody with a three-pointer, and she uh, hits it. Saw her take a lot of shots from behind the arc in the first half and just was off. If she starts hitting some of those, it could be a big difference maker in this game. Well, we saw the same thing in the opening half where you get a, an offensive rebound basket. The defense has collapsed to the goal trying to rebound. And you get that open look on the three-point line, and she buried that one. So we have another whistle on the floor as the officials are going to get together and talk. See what they call here. So we have a foul. That one's going to be on number five, Bryn Fortman. Have had a relatively clean game here so far. Not a lot of fouls in that first half. Just three total fouls in the first half. There's a turnover. So now Crestview, unfortunately, kind of starting this second half like they did the game. A couple of empty possessions here. Back-to-back -back turnovers as uh, Columbus Grove has already made it a three-point game and have an opportunity now to draw even closer or potentially tie this game up. Both of those because the defensive pressure was good. and That time the pass got forced. And there's a turnover by the Bulldogs. That's where Coach uh, wants to go with the basketball right now, Coach Brian Schrader. He wants to get the ball inside in the middle of that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Just unable to handle the pass that time. McCoy feeds Gregory down low. Here comes four Bulldogs on the defense. She's trying to get through the traffic and eventually is going to pick up some contact. I believe they're going to get Clement on that one. And they did, as that's going to be Sage's first foul of the night. So there's no shot. Foul's on the floor. So Crestview's going to have to get rid of this ball and coming close as they were. And that went right into Gregory. And I have no idea how, one, she caught it, and then, two, she got it up cleanly. It's like a Marvin Harrison Jr. catch. You know, there's no way you can get the ball through two defenders, and she still snagged it and was able to go back up and score. Back out to a five-point lead. Crestview on top, 29-24. Ock Moody's pass almost taken away and finally does up into the hands of the Knights. Great hustle that time by Ellie Klein. There's Kolwicki. Being guarded tightly by Ock Moody. Has to get rid of it as Crestview's going to reset. Jalen Sauter has moved to try to cry at corral Callie Gregory this half. Gregory trying to get that lob. They finally find it, but Sauter does a great yeah, job really of going up job. and taking that one. And we're going to have a trial, travel, excuse me. That one's going to get called on Jalen Sauter. She's not happy about that call. She did a great job of going up and ripping that one away from Gregory, but as she came down, lost her feet. And that's the call, so we're going to have I saw that. contact yep. as they got a little aggressive down there. Uh, Gregory trying to get position, Sauter not giving her any. And <laughs> she got frustrated to give her a two-hand shove in the back. And that, that was a very good defensive series that time for Jalen Sauter. And Jalen Sauter, you got to like the aggressiveness she's playing with down there. And that's what it's going to take because right now Gregory, she has the hot hand. It almost seems like she can do no wrong. You know, those are the things that you have to do. You got to get her off of her rhythm, kind of get her off her spot. And they did at that time. You saw the frustration come through, and it was another turnover for Crestview. Sauter now on the other side, three-point shot, no good. McCoy can't come up with the rebound. And we're going to have another foul. This one's going to be on Josie Kowicki. Really good look that time. Baseline penetration dribble, the pass to the top of the circle. Had a good look at it and was able to secure the offensive rebound. That is Kowicki's first foul of the night, team second of the half. Clement back up top. Long cross pass to Clement. Clement going to drive, get to the free throw line. Some miscommunication that time. And we're going to have a foul as Kowicki that time. If she just would have held up, she probably ended up with the turnover anyway as it looked like the momentum uh, from Fortman was going to carry her past half court. But got into her body, knocked her down, and going to pick up the foul. I think she was trying to hold up and just couldn't quite get stopped that time to get her second foul. Team's third of the half. Sawed her down into the corner. They're trying to find Nesby down low, but nice job by McCoy to get her hand on that basketball. Here comes Gregory. Gregory works against Clement, kicks it back out. Klein, three-point shot, good. Ellie Klein with her second three-pointer. 
as Crestview goes on top, 32-24, and Columbus Grove wants to take a timeout and talk about it. Crestview on top, 32-24, 4.46 left to go here in the third quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. So Columbus Grove wanted to take a timeout as Crestview, kind of almost the same script we saw in the first half, comes out, throws it away, has some turnovers, a little bit of trouble on the offensive rebounding side of things, and then they got hot. They started hitting some three-point shots, and that's what they're doing here in the third quarter. That last three-point field goal was off an assist, too, by Callie Gregory. She drew the defense to her and found a teammate on the arc. And then coming right out of the timeout, that is not going to make Coach happy as that one goes out of bounds. Some, some miscommunications on the pass. So the basketball is going to go back to the Lady Knights. Columbus Grove had five turnovers in the first 16 minutes, and they have five now here in less than four minutes of this quarter. You see Columbus Grove setting up for some pressure here. They're going to do a 1-2-2, two, two, try to force, see if they can't force another turnover. Gregory, a little hesitation. She's trying to dump off pass. Read nicely by Steck. Shoulder, she comes up with it. So both teams trading turnovers. Here comes Ock Moody. It's Columbus Grove still trying to find some space in this zone defense of Crestview. Sauter has to get rid of it. Showing good patience, not trying to force anything. Especially to try to go to the baseline, got cut off, so I had to pass it back out. Nesby, down low, goes one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes the help. And Gregory that time, instead of being straight up, came over the top and picked up the foul, and that's going to be her second, I believe. Really patient possession, and they got the ball on the top of the circle, the good entry pass down inside as Nesby worked to get post position and draws the foul, and will shoot the third and fourth free throws of the game, all by Columbus Grove. So Nicole Nesby had a nice first quarter. She had six points. Has been held scoreless since. Not able to connect on her first free throw. As you see, Brent Fortman check back into the game for Columbus Grove. Nesby's second free throw no good as well. Rebound down to the Crestview Knights. McCoy in a little bit of trouble. Has to pass it back. Gregory does a nice job finding Klein. Klein. Try to get it down low. Now the Lady Knights going to try to set their offense. McCoy feeds Gregory down low. Working against Fortman. Comes all the way around and gets it to go for the end one. Boy, she had a wonderful basketball game this evening. Good job from her teammates of finding her in the low post as well. This will be the first free throw of the game for Crestview. Callie Gregory now has 18 points on the night as Crestview has extended their lead to double digits as they're on top 10. Gregory able to convert the and one as she continues to have a tremendous offensive game tonight. Columbus Grove just a three point quarter going here. Had a couple of good looks they didn't make and had a couple of free throw opportunities the last time down the floor but they've also turned it over a few times this quarter. Crestview defense has really settled down after that early onslaught in the first quarter. We talked about during their three-game three win streak, the defense only giving up 30 points a game, but Sage Clement not worried about that as she put buries a three-pointer. Really patient possession that time. They got a good look. Here, Coach Gregory on the sideline just screaming patience, wanting their team not to force anything, not trying to make any mistakes. As Klein in a little bit of trouble, is able to dribble out of it. It's back into the middle, finds Gregory down low. Gregory working against Sauter, turn around again, and that is her spot on the floor. That turnaround one-handed jumper has been there all night for her. Really pretty move. Take the ball over her left shoulder to score. Back out to a double-digit lead. Ock Moody sends a three-pointer and gets it to go down. And that was actually Sage Clement. Excuse me. I just saw the two on the jersey. And Clement comes up with her second three-pointer of the quarter. 
Talk about coaching staff. Both of these coaching staffs very experienced. And you're Mark Gregory, and you've got a state championship coach as your assistant over there, Jeremy Best. That's a that's a really good coaching staff. So Gregory was down low, got a little bit under the basket that time, but it didn't matter as Sauter got a little bit of the arm. She's going to get whistled for the foul. That is her first, team's fourth. And Callie Gregory makes another trip to the free throw line. First free throw is up and good. She was shooting just 50% from the free throw line coming into this evening and had only shot four free throws for somebody who's active in the low post. That's a little hard to believe. There she's 50% on this trip. Callie Gregory not able to connect on that one. Loose ball foul against the Knights. That one is going to go against Lacey McCoy, her first, team's fifth. So a few more fouls here in this second half as we're in the third quarter. and Three fouls all of the first half, already up to nine combined between these two. Another three-pointer on its way, and it goes down as Sage Clement is feeling it. Back to back to back three-pointers on the last three possessions, and this is down to a five-point game. Shot her team right back in the game. Here's Gregory going to run against Nesby. A little bit of a hesitation that time. Can't get it to go. Nesby comes up with the rebound. And well defended that time once she got to the low post. We'll see if Crestview decides to try to run somebody out at Clement, get her off that line. Ockmoody takes a three-pointer of her own. That one's just off. McCoy with the rebound, works against the sideline. Comes back to the middle of the floor, passes off to Gregory, and the Knights are going to slow down. One thing you've not seen is many offensive rebounds this quarter by Columbus Grove. Bill Wickey looking for somewhere to go with it. Ends up in the hands of Klein. Klein for the three-pointer. That one's off. Rebound comes down to Fortman. Fortman, miscommunication on the pass. Ends up, the tip pass ended up into the hands of Gregory. Does a nice job of getting that one in for two. So Callie Gregory able to turn a mistake into points. Pushes back out to a seven-point lead with just under 40 seconds left to go in the quarter. Sauter almost threw that one away. Fortman able to gather it in. 25 seconds left to go. As Columbus Grove trying to find a good shot here to end this quarter. Clement on the other side for three, Whoa. and she is feeling it. Four three-pointers in the quarter, and it's a four-point game with 10 seconds to go here in the quarter. McCoy, she worked against a double team, had some contact. And that's only going to be the fifth foul on the Bulldogs, so this one's going to be out of bounds with 9.3 seconds left to go here in the third. Gregory with the inbounds. Gets it over to McCoy. Got to think they're going to try to find her down low, and they do. Gregory, turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound comes in from Ock Moody. She's going to try to launch one. That one's going to be short. And the third quarter comes to a close. 12 points in the quarter by Sage Clement. Gets the Bulldogs back into this game and heading into the fourth. Col or Columbus Grove finds themselves down just four points. Crestview on top, 40 to 36. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. Fourth quarter just about underway. And that third quarter, just when it looked like Crestry was going to run away, Sage Clement comes alive. Her team was 5 of 8 from the three-point line in the quarter. They're now 17, 7 of 18 is Columbus Grove from the three-point line. 7 of 20 from two-point. 1 for 3 from the free-throw line. 20 rebounds, 11 on the offensive end. They turned over 11 times, 6 in the quarter. Crestview, 9 of 20, 6 of 9 from the three-point line, 2 of 3 from the free throw line, 18 rebounds, only 4 offensive, no offensive rebounds in quarter number 3, and they've turned it over 14 times. Columbus Grove starts with the basketball here in the fourth quarter. Sauter's going to drive, turns around, gets a shot up. That one's going to be off the side of the rim and ends up in the hands of Gregory. You know, we were talking about Callie Gregory and the offensive onslaught that she has had tonight as you see Klein drive for two points. As Ellie Klein has done a nice job as she has two three-pointers in that. 
She has eight on this evening. Ellie Klein's a sophomore, led her a year ago as a freshman, and she has stepped up well this evening as, as, as well. Fortman looked to drive, decides to pull it back out. We were talking about Callie Gregory and what she did offensively. She had 10 points there in that third quarter, but not to be outdone. Sage Clement hit four three-pointers and really is the reason that Columbus Grove is still in this game. Yeah, her shooting was outstanding in the quarter. In fact, uh, Columbus Grove won the quarter 15-13. Well, and all 15 of those points came from behind the arc as she had four three-pointers, and then Ock Moody kicked in one of her own. So nothing going down low for them, but they finally found their touch from behind the three-point line. Hawk Moody trying to get something going in the paint. Has that one knocked away. Ends up in the hands of Sauter. And Sauter gets in, yeah, gets into the three-point parade as she comes up with a three-point shot. Phil Wickey does a nice job going up high to get that one. Gregory with a hesitation head fake. Gets into the lane. Can't get that one to go. Offensive rebound comes down to Phil Wickey. She can't get the put back. Sauter comes up with the rebound. And Columbus Grove only finds themselves down to Three points now after being down 11 there in that third quarter. But we are going to have a timeout. This one's going to be by Crestview. Or excuse me, I believe it's Columbus Grove. It's going to be a full timeout, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Are you looking for that perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan? WOSN's broadcast channel can now be streamed anywhere in the world online, Roku, and Apple TV for only a $100 annual subscription. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.wosn.tv or by downloading the Roku or Apple TV apps. And Mark, I'll tell you. That, uh, that stream channel we were talking about before yes. the game even started, I love it. I, I think it for what it's worth and everything that you can see, it doesn't matter where you are, you can catch every game that we broadcast on WOSN. It is tremendous. Gregory wastes no time trying to steal that inbounds pass. Comes up empty, though. Hawk Moody pushes it ahead. Fortman trying to find Clement down low. She had lost it, but somehow ends up in the hands of Sauter. Three-pointer on its oh, way uh, in. A good Lauren Ockmoody comes up with a big three-pointer, took some contact, and still got that one to go. And with 5.35 left to go in the game, we are all tied at 42. Under pressure, she buried that one. That one's no good. Offensive rebound comes down to Kilwicky, but that is just taken away by Fortman. Columbus Grove, every point they have scored here in this second half has come from behind the three-point line. Seven made three-point field goals in this half. They are seven of ten from the three-point line in Is half it? number two. And Crestview still sticking with this zone defense. Had that one poked away as they tried to get Nesby down low. Ends up in the hands of Klein. Klein pushes up to Gregory. Gregory, she's going to set her feet. Shoots for three and good. And that is a big shot for Crestview. Is that kind of stops the bleeding a little bit as Columbus Grove had really turned it on offensively. That was one of those when you take that shot, you go, hey, there's no offensive rebounders. Well, oh, that's a good shot. See Sauter trying to get it down low. Just off the hands of Fortman, goes out of bounds. It's going to go back to the Lady Knights. Back-to-back -back turnovers coming out of the timeout, sandwiched around a, a three-point field goal. And we have another timeout as Coach Gregory wants to talk to his team. It's going to be another full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cause for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donation of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click Donate. So Crestview wanted to take a timeout as they were finally able to get on 
get things going offensively. Their last trip down the floor as Callie Gregory comes up with a big three-pointer to put her team back up three. See what they drew up in the timeout. Here's Kowicki with the left hand, passes it off. It's McCoy, you can tell they're trying to find Gregory down low. Sauter doing a great job. And as Nesby comes through, she's making sure she's covering it. She's trying to fight off two or three Bulldogs. Sauter's doing a really good job. Hands up, body on. Nice pass. And that's what happens when you have the defense trying to cue on one player. Good movement by the Lady Knights. Down low for Kilwicky. She was left all alone, able to put that one in for two. Really good offensive possession. Now they've gone 1-3-1 one zone and get a turnover. They put Gregory on top of the 1-3-1 zone, made the ball reversal difficult. 3.20 left to go. Crestview on top, 47-42. Klein gets over to McCoy. McCoy a little late on that entry pass. As Gregory had come open there for a second, but Sauter does a nice job of coming through. They're trying to get Fortman to help out inside too. Now she has to go out on the perimeter to guard her player. McCoy looking down low. She wants to get into Gregory's hands, but Columbus Grove did a nice job of denying that entry pass. Here's Klein working against Ock Moody. Klein going to have to get rid of it now. Ends up in the hands of McCoy. McCoy's going to drive, but she's going to pick the feet up first. She's going to get called for the travel. Both teams can be very aggressive defensively. They have just five team fouls apiece here in half number two, so they can be very aggressive. If you get a foul, they still take it out of bounds. Nobody on the floor in real foul trouble is the most that any player has is just two. Let's see what this 1-3-1 one, one does. So Clement had come open down low, but that pass took a little long to get down there. Nice recovery by Kulwicki. Nesby right around the free throw line. is getting badgered by a couple of players. Three-point shot on its way. Akmudi can't connect. McCoy comes up with the rebound. 2.15 left to go. Gregory brings it up for the Lady Knights. I heard Coach Gregory earlier in this quarter yelling patience at his team. You got to imagine that's the same mantra he'd like right now as McCoy went baseline, gets tripped up by Nesby. Six team foul. No more fouls to give for the Bulldogs. And we're going to have a, another timeout, but we'll keep it right here. TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. It's coming down to it, Mark, as a couple of times. It looked like Crestview was just going to run away. They had a double-digit lead at one point. Callie Gregory looked like she couldn't be stopped. Columbus Grove did a nice job making adjustments. They haven't been able to get anything going on the inside, but it hasn't mattered much as they've been able to hit a lot of three-pointers. Coming up a little bit cold those last possessions, though. Well, part of that's because of the 1-3-1 one, one zone. They've changed things up, and with Callie Gregory on the top of the 1-3-1 one, one zone, it's disrupted things a little bit, and they've still been able to rebound, even though their tallest player's out on the perimeter. You know, I'm looking at what uh, Coach said in, in his pregame comments he sent to us offensive patience and confidence and that's what's going to have to take place here in the last 201 they're going to get a lot of pressure right now from columbus grove and if there's a negative on the season for crestview they only shoot 53 percent from the free throw line they're going to have to handle the basketball against pressure and make free throws in this late part of the game 201 left to go in the game crestview on top 47 42 cali gregory with a big night 25 points but Sage Clement with 14 of her own. Lauren Ock Moody, she has 10. Now Crestview. Here's Klein. Going to drive. Kicks it back out. As McCoy was left all alone on that wing. She's going to drive. Gets right into Ock Moody. And we're going to have an offensive foul. Lauren Ock Moody does a great job of getting in position and setting her feet and picks up a big offensive foul for her team. Really good job getting there defensively. It looked like it could have been an and one if the call would have gone the other way. It did not go that way, so Columbus Grove's going to get a turnover, and that's the sixth team foul as well, so now it's one and one for both teams. Sauter almost lost the handle on that one, but able to gather it back in. 
Sauter for three. This one's going to be off. Rebound comes down to McCoy. She gets it up to Gregory. And this is the benefit of having Gregory up there at the top of that defense. She was able to run out but had to pull it back out. Clock is on Crestview's side. A minute 20 left to go. Klein's going to dump it off. McCoy is fouled by Nesby. And that is going to put Columbus Grove in the bonus. So we will see Lacey McCoy head to the free throw line. She has been held off the scoreboard tonight. 58% free throw shooter on the season. Her team is two for three for tonight. First free throw is no good. It's going to be tipped. Ends up back in the hands of Gregory. Gregory oh, to the oh basket boy. and one opportunity. Great hustle that time to save the basketball, get it in, and Gregory in the right place at the right time, and you get her that close to the oh basket, my. she's not very often she's going to miss. <laughs> what a play she just made right there. That was that was a situation where that was a five-point game headed the other way, and with that steal that she made right there, now the three-point play, yes. Rattles in and good. Three from four for the line tonight for Callie Gregory. She now has 28. 28 of their 50. Going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Knights. Basketball will stay with the Bulldogs. See if Columbus Grove can get uh, one of those uh, skip passes around for a three and then crash the offensive boards. Hawk Moody comes up with it, gets it over to Clement. That's where she, the area of the floor, she made the most of her three pointers. Hawk Moody, quick three point shot off the front of the rim. Rebound comes down to Klein. That was a really good look, though, into the post and a kick out. They had a good look. She just left a little short. 45 seconds left to go. Nesby comes up, doesn't foul, and now we do have the foul as Brent Fortman is going to send uh, McCoy to the free throw line one more time. Still a one-and-one -one situation. Lacey McCoy heads to the free throw line, came up empty on her last trip. Still looking for her first points of the night. Free throw is up and good. Pushes this out to a nine-point game. McCoy, second shot, up. And no good. Rebound comes down to Clement. Grove's going to have to go quickly. Zach Moody brings it up. Goes right to the basket, gets that one in off the glass. Really good move. They've been on the perimeter so much here in the second half to take the ball to the goal and force the defense to collapse to get the basket. Yeah, the timeout on the floor. Just a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here as well. Still a lot of basketball to play. I mean, it says 34 seconds yeah. on the clock, but we know a lot can happen <laughs> in that time. It's still just a seven-point game, and with the threat of Columbus Grove and how they've been shooting a three-point shot tonight, it's not going to take a lot for them to make up that difference. Yeah, that would be correct. You know they're going to have to shoot a lot of free throws here in this last 34 seconds. That was the ninth team foul, the one we had just a moment ago that put – uh, McCoy on the free throw line, so the next one becomes double bonus time. So that takes a little bit of pressure off the shooters. Remember, it was tied at 42 at one point. Then it was a nine-point run by Crestview to take the lead. That cut that last basket, cut it to seven. See how we play out this last 34. Two timeouts left for each team. Columbus Grove comes out. They're going to show pressure. Going to show some diamond press this time. Going to try to get a hard trap in the corner if they keep the first pass in front of them. As you see, Kilwicky goes the full length of the floor. Comes into Gregory. She had two and then three. They backed one of the defenders off. And here comes the pressure. Getting Ox close to Moody. 10. And that's Ooh. going to be a timeout first. Yep. And that's a good timeout as that 10-second call <laughs> was coming any second. That's going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Crestview with the quick timeout. Want to get it inbound, and this is going to be Gregory downhill. And Clement comes up with a good foul that time as she had a tug on the jersey trying to keep Gregory from the breakaway as Callie Gregory is going to take a trip to the free throw line to shoot two. Well, they were really trying to pressure the basketball game, so she curled off the screen and was able to get the ball clean going towards the goal. And that was a good foul. That was going to be a layup. So now Callie Gregory takes a step to the free throw line trying to see if she can't convert and gets the first one to go. 
She is now four for five on the night from the line. And she pushes her total to 29. Crestview's going to take everybody off the line, send them back. Second free throw is good. 53-44, 22 seconds left to go. Columbus Grove running out of time. Akmudi puts it up. That one's going to be off. Nesby on the putback Ooh. is good. And she's going to make a trip to the free throw line for the end one as Lacey McCoy that time. A little bit of a mental mistake. Stops the clock, sending Nesby to the free throw line. And a chance for a three-point play on a strong rebound and then power back up to the goal. And so, what do we got? Official headed to the scorer's table. I think we're trying to find who the foul was on, I believe. And that was... That's correct. They weren't sure to give the assess the foul to. It ends up going to Lacey McCoy. So the other problem with that, uh, why that was a big foul, if Nesby's able to uh, convert this free throw, it makes it just a two-possession game. Still 16 seconds left to go, and Nesby not able to connect, though. Rebound comes down to Gregory. Long pass. Kilwicky brings it up, and that is going to bring this one to a close as Gregory's going to hold on to the basketball and let the clock run out. And Crestview, they were challenged by Grove. They tried to come back as they lit it up from behind the arc there in the second half. But Crestview able to hold them off as they come up with a big conference victory, 53-46. There's some quick stat numbers here on the Crestview side, 12 of 28 from the two-point area, 7 of 10 from the arc, 6 of 9 from the free throw line. They had 26 rebounds. They turned the ball over 16 times, 8 of 23 from inside the arc for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. They were 9 of 23 after that big run they had earlier from the three-point line. They made just one of five free throws tonight. They had 25 rebounds, so Crestview won that by one. And Crestview also turned the ball over one more time than did Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove turned it over 15 times. And yeah, we talked about it at the beginning of the game, Mark, how important conference games are, especially here in the early going. You know, Delphus Jefferson, very good. Yep. Everybody knows that's who they're, they're looking up to and chasing. You, know, you need them to make a misstep. Uh, you know, Crestview now still sitting with just that one conference loss. You know, it really helps as you continue to move through this conference. You can't afford a lot of losses here, especially in the early going. Each of these teams will still have Jefferson to play yet. Allen East, of course, off to a good start as well. They have the, the win over Crestview earlier this year. And if you really want to look at a, of a positive tonight for the, the Crestview Knights in this victory, obviously the 30 points to put on the board by Callie Gregory. But their quarter scores? 14, 13, 13, 13. So a very well balanced evening tonight, and they've done a really good job to get to that 53. Yeah, the offense for Crestview has really been good. This is their fourth straight victory. They've kind of turned that corner. The defense gave up a little bit more than they've been used to during this run, but they weathered that storm, and I think that can tell you a lot about your team as well. Well, I think the, the good thing if you're Columbus Grove, you did a great job of fighting back. Now, they were down for a long time. They got, got hot on the three-point line. They stayed with things defensively. Uh, they just couldn't quite get over the hump towards the end of this, but a really good effort, I think, by Columbus Grove. They're going to drop to 4-4 four and four on the season, but they'll be dangerous throughout the campaign. You know, and I think, Mark, you said it best here, uh, in one of our last breaks here. Callie Gregory, pretty good at basketball. Yeah, I think she's pretty good at basketball. Yeah, not, I mean, I, we didn't keep any individual totals as far as rebounds, assists, and steals. She had a bunch of those to go with her 30 points, and it seemed like whenever they needed something positive done tonight, Crestview, they, they got it from her, and you can see why she was a first-team all-conference player a year ago, and obviously coming into her junior year, having another really good year. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Columbus Grove as the Crestview Lady Knights come in to town and they come away with the victory 53 of 46. I'd like to thank tonight's sponsor Hawker Drywall. We appreciate uh, your support. Also like to thank our camera crew tonight doing a great job as always and everything you do for us. Everybody back at the station as well doing the editing everything that everybody does. We got the easy job. We just get to come <laughs> yeah. and watch games and talk about it. They're the ones that make all this happen and we appreciate everything that they do. The Crestview Lady Knights come into Columbus Grove and walk away victorious 53-46. For Mark Shine, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.